Hey guys, it's Trav here from Trav 3887. So in this video, we're going to be doing the YZ85 water pump rebuild kit. Um, this little thing sat around for probably five years with no coolant in it, so the seals have gone hard. We found that out um, just you know when the bike was sitting, there's some coolant coming out. Uh, as I said on previous videos, the bike had been rebuilt, but as I said, it sat for quite some time. So I purchased the the Vertex water pump uh, rebuild kit. So it comes with bearing, washer, um, some seals, and some gaskets, all the necessary components to rebuild your water pump. So basically what you need to do is remove the brake lever, the kickstarter, we've got to drain the coolant out of your radiator. You can use a coolant again if you want. Um, I will be because it's only new coolant. And drop the gearbox oil out of the, out of the engine. Um, you can reuse it if you want to, but I'm going to take the opportunity to service the motor now. Uh, so it's cheap, easy to do. And then we will pull the side cover off and then we'll get into the water pump side. Now I'll show you guys what to look for, um, where the little hole is for when the seals go bad and where the fluid comes out. Where the hole is, is where the top of the screwdriver is there. Now, if fluid's coming out of that hole, your seals have gone, now that's time to do your water pump. So that's, uh, that's what you look for. Okay, so we want to pull the brake lever off first. Remove the spring. Lose all any parts. There's just a couple split things to pull apart, pull out. Remove. I've had this thing apart quite a few times. Brake lever, rear brake lever. Okay. Now we want to remove our Kickstarter, so it's an 8mm, so that's that bolt there, and then the coolant is this bolt here, so there are 10mm, so <clears throat> you just want to locate yourselves a, a container, which I've got a cup, it's only 500mm, so this will be more than enough. And as you can see, the oil that's coming out of it isn't very clean, so that's definitely definitely age there. Um, but that's all right, we'll get it serviced and some nice fresh, fresh oil in it. So when you obviously take the case off and you remove it, you're gonna lose some oil. There's gonna be obviously residual oil left in the, in the casing. That's okay. So you just get a rag and put a rag down so you don't go making a giant mess. So while that's draining we will crack the radiator coolant, so the radiator cap. Because if you don't crack the radiator cap when you go to drain your fluid, the fluid will, it won't come out, it'll just sort of stay there. It's like a vacuum effect. It just, uh, just stays there. So 10 mil again on the water pump side. Obviously I've got a bit of a bad gas because it leaked out already. So let's get ready to capture the, the coolant as she comes out. So I'm running the food line coolant in this particular bike. And same as my KTM 300. I've got plenty of coolant there, so if I do lose some, it doesn't really matter. Nice green forbidden cordial. You Aussies will know what I'm talking about. You don't want to get this crap in your mouth. Not very good for you. So that's what I mean with the vacuum effect. 
So I'm just playing with the, the radiator cap. You can see the different pressure flows coming through. Okay, so that's that for the coolant. We saved most of it, which is good. Alrighty, yeah. All right. So I've got a rag down there to collect anything else what um, what drains out. But anyway, we will get this case off. One more thing to remove is the radiator hose. Right, I don't know, I believe that's six mil on this hose clamp. Or just a Phillips head. Okay. Right, I, this is gonna take just a little bit, so I'm gonna put it on time lapse for you guys. Right now guys, so we're ready to pull the side case off. Now, just put your finger on here, hold pressure on that and pull here. You don't wanna pull too hard and have your kickstart shaft come out. I'll tell you why in a sec. So as that comes off here, pull too hard, you'll pop the spring. So the kickstart return spring will come off and you have to reset it. So that's the inside of uh, the casing. Water pump drive gear. Now, I'll just change the camera around guys for you so you can get a bit of a look at uh, what it looks like when we start pulling the the front side of the casing off for here. Alrighty, so here we are. We are going to pull the water pump off the case. So we just use the uh, eight mil T bar. So remove that one bolt here, and here we are. We've got the water pump exposed which it looks like a really old gasket by the looks of that. So it does come with a new one. I believe it actually is. It could even be the factory gasket. So we will put, so I believe here, we've got a 10 mil on the impeller. Nope, so it must be a 12 mil. Back to my trusty tool kit. So 12 mil there, and then on the other side we've got to lock the shaft with a 10 mil. Oop. Let's try that again. Oh yeah. Well, that was not tight at all. It's a little bit scary. It was almost finger tight to be honest. Okay, so that's off, impeller's off. Now the shaft should push out. Okay. That come off. And that washer was on the inside. So this is your impeller shaft. Which we can see it's got some wear on it. Yeah, so that's the impeller shaft there. I have to do a bit of cleaning on that. Clean it back up again. All right, so seals. Locate a seal here. One seal's located here. And there's a bearing, and there'll be another seal in behind that. So we've just got to pull the seals out, knock the bearing out, and uh, we'll be on our way to getting it all sorted out. All right, so we want to remove the seal. You just use a flat blade screwdriver and you can just grab it and pop it out. Just keep keep note too, there's two different size seals here. Okay. So I'll just zoom in for you guys. Oh right, yeah, get a better look at what's going on. Now we shall pull the bearing out. There we go, you've got another seal in behind. So what we'll do is we will put 
a socket here. So we'll use that 12 mil socket and we can knock that bearing through and the seal at the same time. Now a good idea to put your casing on a block of timber just like so. It's given timber not concrete so you don't want to hit too hard. Okay. So just tap it through. Okay. Right here then. So there's the internal seal. As I said, two different sizes. So inside, outside, and they look very old as well. And this bearing, this bearing is pretty rubbish by the looks of that. Don't know if you guys can hear it, but if you can hear that, that bearing's busted. Oh, look at the play in that. So. The water pump wasn't rebuilt when the bike was built, so that's okay because I'm doing it now. And also, I've just noticed the amount of crud in here. So this is what happens with time. Over time things get just full of crap and, and gunky, and uh, yeah, we just go in there and we we'll clean it up. So I'll use a bit of degreaser on that, clean the surfaces up. And then we'll start putting this pump back together, guys. Right, yeah, so let's get cleaning. Bit of good old degreaser. Good stuff. So we'll put it in this container so we don't go making a mess. Degreaser there. Get the crud out. I even degrees in here. Because the poor little bike's got some crap floating around that gearbox. Alright. We're moving some crap here, guys. What have you been thinking of the series? Has it been good? Are you enjoying the content? Let me know in the comments down below what you think. And um, even give me some ideas of what you sort of want to see me doing. You know, we um, muck around bits and pieces here, there, and everywhere on the weekend, so it'd be good to get some input from you. Right, yeah. Clean her up nice and good. Beautiful. Look at that. Nice and fresh and clean. Nice and lovely. Yes, so also I need to get a razor blade and clean up the surface for the gasket. Um, this can be another another hindrance, see? Yeah, another hindrance of, um, of failure. So with water and oil, so leaking either side. But uh, I'll get that cleaned up and we'll start putting it back together. Now, if you're only young, get one of your parents or your guardian to help you out um, because it could be dangerous and you can cut yourself. So what you want to do is you want to clean up these surfaces here. So just with a razor blade. Razor blade, box cutter, steel knife, however you guys want to say it, wherever you're from in the world. But you want to make sure these surfaces are clean. You don't want to have to pull your bike apart again or any sort of, you know, anything you're working on, the mating services. So just make sure it's clean. Do it right the first time and you haven't got to do it again. So clean that up. Clean it up nice and good. Okay, so that looks good. Give her a bit of a wipe down. All right, beautiful. Now we shall start putting some seals in there. All right, to do this, same sort of principle, but in reverse. We'll use a um, another, another socket to drive the seals through. So we'll start with the big seal. So 
the seal here in the kit. Here's your old razor blade to get the bits and pieces out of here. Don't cut your new gasket butt, that'll suck. There we go. Shit. Sorry guys, but you know what I'm like. Stickers. Love stickers. There we go. Oh, okay. I'm just checking out some seals here, guys. Making sure, yep, no, they're right, that's good. Oh yeah. All right, so spring side, spring side of the seal in first. Now we're just gonna get a socket to drive the seals in. So just get the correct size socket to get the outside dimension. So we'll do that like so, and just gently tap it in. Okay, so that seal's in, in placed. Okay, so now we've got the bearing and the other seal on this side. So just same sort of thing, but in reversed. I'll just change the camera direction so you can see a bit better. Beautiful. Okay. So the little seal, and we will need probably a thirteen mil. Yep, 13 will do fine. Okay, beautiful. Going home. Okay, the bearing. We've got the brand new bearing here. So we'll pop this one home as well. So we get the right size socket as well for that one. Which might be... A looks to be like a 20 mil. Yep. So we'll get a 20 mil socket, and we'll pop the bearing in. Make sure the bearing's square. So there's the bearing home. So, oh, sorry, new bearing. Beautiful new seals. Now inside the seals butt together, and there's a hole inside. And when the when the seals bust out, they'll leak past the the impeller shaft, and then they will leak out the hole there. So that's how that works. Okay. So, let's start putting this back together. So here we are. Um, probably put a bit of rubber grease or a little bit of oil on here just to help it slip through the, sh the, um, the seals. Don't want to damage the new seals. Now, this here is burnt onto the shaft just from old busted seals. So we might have to put a new impeller shaft in this bike at a later date. But uh, we'll just put this back together. So push him through gently. You can already feel the difference, that's stiff now, where before it was just really, really loose. Alrighty, -o. so pop this over. And here we are. Pop this washer, the crush washer back on there. 
Now this is your impeller. So I pop the impeller back on. Okay. Impeller's back on there. Now we'll just nip it up. Now as for tension, I'm not sure on tension settings, but we'll just do it up firm. Now before I could have just went crack and undone it, but we'll just do it up firm. We'll just get a bit of light happening guys. Can't see much in the dark there. So remember it was a 13 mil. I'm just gonna locate my 13 mil. Sorry. 12 mil, my mistake. A 12 mil. On the impeller. 10 mil on the back. Alright. So he's putting the 10mm spanner on the back side there. And we shall do up the impeller. Pop this on here, like so. And the 8mm T-bar. I won't do that up tight yet because I have to line the gasket up. Okay. Right. See, so I don't want to build up too tight yet because I've got to line the gasket up with the holes. But we can start putting the engine casing back on the bike. Right, yeah. So here we are, getting ready to put the casing back on the bike on the engine. So same sort of thing again. We want to clean up that casing. So just um. Be careful doing this, it's sh these are sharp. Just want to get the old gasket off. That was pretty good. There was nothing really major on there, just that little point there. But there's some old gasket. So I'll go ahead and wipe down the surface. Wipe it down, clean it up. Clean is good, dirty is bad. It will cause problems for later on. Okay. Looking good. Now the kit comes with a new gasket. So, new gasket's going on. Looking good. Okay. Righto, so there's a new gasket on there. Surfaces are all nice and cleaned up. Now, there's obviously some holes in there for some dowels. That's where your water gallery is. Right, yeah. So, engine casing. So, side casing. Make sure everything's all good on the impeller. Looks good to me. Looks beautiful. Just hold your kickstart shaft on up. Now, this could be fun. It might not want to go back together, as I would hope. And it did. So, that's good. Case is back on. Now we will go on hyperspeed, put all the nuts and bolts, well, all the bolts back on the side case, get everything all prepped up, and then we'll go back to filling up water, coolant, so coolants, and the gearbox oil, and we'll fire up and make sure she sounds good. Righto, sweet as. I'm using the Penrite MC Go motorcycle gear roll in a 10W40 weight. Now this is good for obviously wet clutches um, and uh, it's just a mineral oil. So we'll be using this stuff here. Now the 85s take 500mm and this is a litre so it's perfect because I've got another service. So we'll just top her up. Now there's obviously with the little 85s there's no way of knowing how much oil you've gotten like gotten into the, into the bike so what you can do is just put on a measuring glass or use a sight on the side so I'll just go down to here and go down to 500 and that'll be neat okay so we'll check what we've gotten in here 
So 600. Well, not 600, but about four, three or 400 mil. All right, pretty much bang on perfect. Maybe a little bit more, but it doesn't matter. Righto, so that's that side done. The gearbox has had fresh oil put on it. I'm gonna put your filler plug back in. Make sure there's no leaks, nothing's leaking, can't see anything leaking. Now we'll head up top and we will put in some coolant. Putting that poot line coolant back in. The same coolant I had in the bike from before. It takes nearly, nearly a litre of coolant. So just keep an eye. Make sure your clamps are definitely done up down the bottom because it will leak out. All right, so there's just an airlock in there. Okay. So we're full. the YZ85 water pump rebuild kit done and dusted. Um, we won't have no more leaking coolant, so that's gonna be excellent. Um, yeah, all in all, out of a 10, I believe it's only a five, like in skill level. It's pretty basic. You know, if, if you never tackled something like this before, um, get your parents or, or, or a friend or something to give you a hand, or if you've got some mechanical knowledge, it's basic, guys. So just um, after it's all done, just check it out. Go for a ride, make sure nothing's leaking. Uh, make sure your fluid levels are right. Check your fluid levels after you've gone for a ride again, just to be sure. Um, if you don't want to cook your little bike, you know, if you haven't done up a, done up a bolt properly and you've, you know, leaked coolant out. But um, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, we do plenty more cool things on the channel. Um, yeah, so it's all about just having a good time. To the regulars, all right, guys. Love your work. It's been awesome. Thanks for supporting the channel. And also, too, got a rep the mad dogs you guys know who you are so um anyway i hope you enjoyed the video and uh we will be seeing you on the next one cheers